Hello and welcome to this next part of digital communication series. In this video, we are going to discuss digital receivers and eye diagram. Eye diagram would be discussed in the last part of digital receivers. So digital receivers is divided into three parts. So So the first part is the reshaping of incoming pulse with the help of equalizer. Now the second part is we have to find out the timing information for best sampling instant. We have to sample our received signal. So the received signal should be sampled at the best sampling instant where I'll get to know the best information about the data. So we need to extract the timing information. So the last part is the final part which is decision making about the received signal. So now without wasting any time let's move to the block diagram of digital receiver. So this is the block diagram of digital receiver. So we have the transmitting channel. In the transmitting channel signal and noise are there. So signal is mixed with the noise in the transmitting channel. After that we have preamplifier and equalizer. After that timing extraction and decision making or sampling block. After that regenerator from which we will get the output. So let's discuss all these blocks. So first is preamplifier and equalizer. So preamplifier is amplifying the signal. So during the transmission in the channel, the signals signal get attenuated. So the preamplifier is deattenuating this signal. Deattenuating the signal, which means it is amplifying the amplitude of the signal. So received signal is amplified using preamplifier. After that we have equalizer. So during transmission the signal get distorted as well. So the signal from the perfect square shape it get distorted. So now the equalizer is removing these distortions. But remember in this block, when the signal is received, it is pre-amplified. So signal is having the noise component as well. So when I amplify this signal, so this is the distorted signal. This is my ideal signal, this is my distorted signal. So when I amplify the signal, so the distorted signal when amplified, the noise component also get amplified. So this is called noise amplification. So when I do pre-amplification, my noise component also get amplified. So I have to have a trade-off between the preamplifier and equalizer so that my noise would not be amplified too much. So so it is amplifying my noise as well. So noise is amplified at the critical frequency. So now about equalizer. What is equalizer doing? Equalizer is removing the distortions. So the component in the channel, the transmitting channel is adding noise. So the equalizer should have frequency component which should be inverse of the transmitting channel. So the frequency component of equalizer should be inverse of the transmitting channel. Plus we know that the noise is amplified at critical frequencies. So when I am amplifying the distorted signal, I am amplifying the noise as well. 
so there should be a trade off between the amplifier and the equalizer so if i increase the pre amplifier too much there would be a large noise amplification but if i increase the equalizer too much i'll not be having de attenuation so de attenuation is you removed by using amplifier amplifier boosts the signal so there should be a trade off between amplifier and equalizer so now coming to the equalizer so we have three types of equalizer first is zero forcing equalizer second minimum mean square equalizer and third adaptive equalizer so now coming to the next block which is timing extraction timing extraction is giving me the best sampling instant i have to sample my data but where so if i have the data like this so if i sample this data at this point of time here i have zero as well as one so i'll be ambiguous about the data so best sampling instead should be at the center of the data so from where i get to know the from timing extraction i'll get to know the best sampling instead so we have three type of timing extraction so the first thing is using primary and secondary standard so i have the master timing information with me but this type of timing extraction is costly so it is not used in a lot of applications but using this type of timing extraction i can transmit high volume and high speed data after that i have timing extraction using separate synchronizing signal so in this type of timing extraction we send a separate pilot carrier with the original signal so a separate pilot carrier is sent with the signal so because the separate pilot carrier is also sent we have the bandwidth which is high so it requires high bandwidth and high power now the third type of timing extraction is without using synchronizing signal so obviously there would be no pilot carrier and obviously it would be not requiring a large bandwidth because pilot carrier carrier bandwidth is also not there so it requires less power also but like it is less accurate also so when we have unipolar device so as discrete component is not equal to 0 so discrete component is used to find out the timing extraction so here i have the average value which is varying from 0 to 1 so it is not equal to 0 when i average it so discrete component is not 0 which is used to find out the timing information but when i have nrz signal which is at minus 1 at 1 so here i have discrete component which is 0 so first i'll pass it through non linear device so here average was not equal to 0 but when i have polar average is equal to 0 so first i'll transmit it through non linear device which is converted to dc or non non polar so after that i'll have a discrete component which will give me the timing information so now we have jitters as well so jitter is the displacement of the data from its original position 
this was my initial data this is my new data so new data is displaced by some time so this is called jitter so jitters can be easily tackled using highly stable phase lock loop so now this is all about timing extraction now coming to the decision making so how decision making is making the decision that it is 1 or 0 so if i take polar type of coding if i have the data in positive direction it will represent 1 if i have data in negative direction it will represent 0 but this is the ideal case actually the data travels like this so we have the amplitude of the data which was a so this is the actual amplitude a represents my actual amplitude but plus we have noise so with amplitude i have noise also so a plus n is represented like here so here i'll have a plus n which is positive which is representing my 1 a plus n is negative which is representing 0 here a plus n is positive which is representing 1 but when i saw the actual data actual data was this so here i got 0 here i got 1 so actually i got 1 0 1 0 1 but what i transmitted i transmitted 1 Zero 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 one. So this was the transmitted. This is the received data. So here, due to noise, the pulses shifted upside the decision floor. So because the pulses shifted upside, I am getting the incorrect received data. So decision floor is checking the amplitude, and according to the amplitude, it is saying that the data is positive or data is negative so positive is represented by 1 and negative is represented by 0 so i hope now you understand how decision making is making the decision about the signal that it is 1 or 0 so the decision which is it make it gives to the regenerator and according to the decision so if it makes the decision that it is one so regenerator makes a one pulse if it says it is zero so regenerator makes a zero pulse so this is how we are regenerating the signal so we are not extracting the signal from the original signal we are again regenerating the signal this is why the regenerated signal is having a less noise so now coming to the next part which is i diagram so why i diagram is required so when i am transmitting the signal through the channel the signal is added with the noise to see how the channel is adding the signal and how much the signal is distorted by the noise in the channel so for that i have some measure so i diagram is used to see how much my signal is attenuated or changed by the channel so now we see with the help of i diagram what we can see so quality of incoming pulse is shown by an i diagram it is used to check the noise immunity the intersymbol interference the visual interpretation of intersymbol interference and the accuracy of timing extraction so now coming to the intersymbol interference which isi is a broad term so now we'll see what is isi
so isi represents inter symbol interference so why it is cause let's see so let's suppose st represents my original signal so st is limited between a and b so it is band limited between a and b so now this is the frequency transform of st so st represents the frequency transform so it is also band limited between a and b but it has sharp edges at a and b but in practical cases the sharp edges are not actually possible to find out so because the sharp edges are not there so because of that we have two types of changes amplitude response change and phase change so if i have amplitude response change so if the amplitude amplitude is changed so it is called the band limited channel so the channel is band limited now so it does not acquire the large signal so the length of the signal is much more than the band of the channel so after that we have phase change so when the phase is changed it is called fading so now let's see how it is spreading so when the signal is spreaded so this was my first signal this is my second signal so both of them are spreaded and because of spreading these are overlapped so this overlapped part is called aliasing so because of spreading i have aliasing so now let's see how if i have polar nrz so this is my polar nrz signal so if i have to represent it on oscilloscope so for positive part i represent it like this and for negative part i'll represent it like this so when i have ideal channel my signal would get less noise and so this is how my signal would look like at cro so in ideal case so when i have ideal channel and second case is non ideal channel so in the case of ideal channel noise would be there but the signal won't overlap upon another signal so the signal would be distorted so, so now it would be traveling like this so for ideal channel it is looking like this so it is looking like an eye so it is called an eye diagram but let's suppose this phenomena for a non ideal channel so let's suppose that my signal has spreaded now so it is looking like this so when the signal is spreaded first signal is like this second would be like this third would be like this fourth would be like this so this is what happening at the downside also so because a lot of signals are present at the same place my eye would look like it is closed so when i have ideal channel i is open eye for non ideal channel it is closed eye because a lot of sing signals would overlap due to spreading so now when i make a bigger picture of the eye diagram so now this is my decision floor this is my best sampling instant best sampling instant should be at the place where my eye is wide open and now i hope you know if the eye is open which means the noise component is less or the spreading is less so eye wide open means the noise component is less so here i have the best sampling instant so best sampling is instant is at the place where my eye is most widely open so now this represent the slope slope is representing my isi so if the slope is less which means the inter symbol interference is more so when the slope is less which means i is closed which means isi is more so now after that this is my noise margin so noise margin means if this point would shift here so noise margin would not be there so 
if this point shifted here so my noise margin at that time would be zero so which means i is closed so when i is closed i would not get any place to make the decision so when i so when my noise margin is there so i can actually make the decision about zero or one so noise margin tells me that the signal is in the noise noise margin and i can measure one as one and zero as zero so this is my zero error this is my one error so error in the detection of zero so from here to here the zero error is there plus here to here jitter or timing error so from here i can not make the decision about the sample so from here to here my data could displace so this delay i am taking as the timing error so that my data could displace from here to here so this error is compensated using the i diagram so from here to here i have timing error timing error means the data is displaced from its original position to a new position so data can displace from this position to up to this position so we have set the limits to for displacement of the data so that data displacement or jitter is also compensated so this was all about the i diagram i hope you like this session share this session with your friends as well if you like it thank you so much